a new video of the raid at Sean Diddy Combs' home in Los Angeles from the mother of one of his sons. The, one, that son ended up in handcuffs. Agents also raided Combs' home in Miami last week. Here's some of the sped up uh, video from those raids. Criminal defense attorney Mark Iglarsh is based in Florida. He's standing by with his take on all of this. But first to chief correspondent Jonathan Hunt. Hey, Martha, we all saw the pictures of heavily armed agents from Homeland Security Investigations arriving at Sean Coombs mansion here in L.A. But the first for the first time now, we are seeing what happened inside as the agents moved along the hallways, weapons drawn, guiding and guided in part, it appears, by a drone as they move in to detain two of Combs' adult sons, Justin and Christian. They have their rifles aimed at the pair. The edited video was posted on Instagram by Justin Combs' mother, Misa Hilton, who called the agent's actions overtly militarized and deplorable. Well, 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 looks like the FBI has found some crazy incriminating evidence in Diddy's house for both him and Jay-Z. Three states working in tandem and they did not tell the officers who they were raiding mm -hmm. they went in tactical as they were instructed to they didn't know they was raiding diddy's house mm -hmm. the higher ups didn't tell anybody because they knew with diddy being a, a fed informant that he had people in the force and they wanted to make sure that went through legit so they ain't tell nobody whose houses they was going to. That's why you see the guns. The, the cops didn't know that it was Diddy's house over there in Beverly Hills around the corner from uh, uh, the Playboy Mansion. They didn't know until they seen the kids. To the raid real quick with Diddy. Mm -hmm. um, his sons were there and he was not there at the house's own. Yeah. And he was, was quiet. the worst part of that shit. And to see his sons being How hacked. Do you force your kids to do your perp walk? That was the that was the worst part, and all I could think about was Kim and Misa. Mm. The girls. Just her son. He he left their son to be walked out backwards on camera for the world to see. Their free roaming days are numbered, and we're here for it. In a recent interview, an undercover FBI agent whose identity is being protected for his own security called Diddy's home a scum cave, referring to both him and his best friend, Jay-Z. Well, thank you for having me, Natasha. I actually am surprised um, that he, he took this step, but he's not sorry. He's sorry he got caught. That's why he made this, this step, in my opinion. Um, you know, he went so far as to pay the hotel to keep this video quiet. So I don't believe he's sorry. If he was sorry, this is something he would have admitted to right away. And as you mentioned before, this is something that he has vehemently denied in the past. Yeah, and, and Mark, LA's district attorney uh, has already said that Diddy will not be charged for this assault because of the statute of limitations. We actually spoke with Gloria Allred about this last night, who has represented other victims with allegations against Diddy. She believes charges could still stem from this video. I want to listen to that quickly together. Under the law, to file a criminal charge for this type of misconduct, it's too late. Uh, but now that doesn't mean that somehow it might, if the federal government ends up filing, uh, you know, indicting and filing charges against Mr. Combs, it may be that, for example, if they file a RICO violation, that has a longer statute of limitations. Violation. Mark, what do you think of this, a RICO violation? Well, I think this is the, the, the uh, any criminal charge in state court and the, from the DA's office is the least of his concerns. As Tracy will tell you, I mean, he was hit by the FBI and Homeland Security. They're not there to investigate an assault that occurred in 2016. He's in a box that the feds have caught him in, and he's not going to get out of it, okay? I don't think he's going to get out of it. We're hearing all these rumors and all these lawsuits that are going on that specifically point to human trafficking, sex trafficking as well, where he benefit from, benefited from. This is actually going to be evidence that's going to bootstrap in and going to be able to show in a trial if there ever is one of the uh, that show this is how he acts this is his modus operandi this is not a new crime that they're going to charge him with okay but it could be a predicate act 
and Ms. Allred was completely correct. This could be a RICO charge against him. My point is, I think he's already in a box he's not going to climb out of. They just haven't put the lid on it yet. Mm. And Tracy, I saw you nodding there earlier. You know, I'm going to ask you about this, but I also think it's an interesting moment in time because Cassie Ventura's name was dragged through the mud last year when she first came forward with these allegations. Tell me a little bit more about the court of public opinion, first of all, turning in her favor. And then also, could this incident add anything to the FBI investigation into Diddy? Because it's now been almost two months since his homes were raided. Well, I wholeheartedly agree with what Mark said. And I also think, too, the charges from Homeland Security, any federal charges, in my opinion, because I feel this may be a RICO or, or trafficking charge that could come down, is going to take some time. I've worked RICO cases that have taken actually years to investigate. I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen here, but I don't think that this is something that's going to be handed down, an indictment that's going to be handed down very quickly. Now, I, yeah. in terms of, oh, I'm sorry. No, in go terms ahead. Of, in terms of the court of public opinion, look, I think Diddy actually dragged the federal government, quite frankly, through the mud. Uh, when these search warrants were executed, he said that they used inappropriate force. In my opinion, this video right now gives them all the reason in the world. Adding more fuel to the fire, claims about Jay-Z's treatment to Beyonce have resurfaced. When I say Corey, I'm talking about Kathy White. Oh yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Uh... Jay-Z's Jay pregnant Z's, mistress yeah. who died of an imaginary fucking aneurysm, just like the woman who was best friends with Kim and Kimora who wrote the book, Bling, and died as soon as it made the bestsellers list. Who the fuck was these people supposed to go to? You can't go to the boss because the boss is fucking you. And the boss is boss? Don't get no fuck. Can't go to the authorities. They're all bought and paid for go when you get over by the industry nowhere that's where you go nowhere which is where people like me step in the first time i ever saw jay-z or even heard him spit a rhyme was at an mc battle street battle in new york he showed up as the nigga that was with big l yes. big l was who put jay-z on and then Big L died, and then the next thing you know, Jay Z doing songs with Biggie and building a working camaraderie with Honeycombs. And then Biggie died, Tupac died. There was the 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 fight between who was the top rapper now, Nas and, and Jay Z. And then the next thing you know, Nas has a nervous breakdown, and he's taken out of the game, and then saw Jay Z. He will slump anyone in any relationship for a dollar. Look at how he did Dane. If you're a halfway intelligent person, when do you start questioning how lucky some motherfuckers keep getting? Right. I think she's- She went and killed the girl cats. Okay. A girl went to court and charged her with extreme witchcraft. She, she was hypnotized. She was drugged. Beyonce came and she was in there eating on her while she was asleep. No snacking on his bitch, killing people cats. And guess what? They wouldn't give her the restraining order. They just told her to stay away from Beyonce and work for somebody else. Guess what? She's having a hard time finding work too, which is interesting because she's a brilliant musician. She was trained at the Berkeley, esteemed Berkeley College of Music, handpicked by my very good friend, Terry Lynn Carrington, Dr. Terry Lynn Carrington who put together Beyonce's entire female band. Handpicked by my very good friend, Terry Lynn Carrington. Dr. Terry Lynn Carrington, who put together Beyonce's entire female band, which was Matthew Knowles' idea because he couldn't get Beyonce to stop people. Guess you didn't know your daughter well enough because she just started f***ing all the girls. Impulse control issues? I don't know. And now we're left questioning his integrity and his public image. Folks, we're living in the era of the expose, and everything is free game. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them, the, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. The public, just like 
me is left to wonder about the extent and credibility of these allegations. On May 21st, model Crystal McKinney filed her lawsuit against Sean Combs, Bad Boy Entertainment Holdings, Sean John Clothing LLC, and Universal Music Entertainment Group. And the statute says that it revives any claims against, quote, a party who commits, directs, enables, we'll talk about that, participates in or conspires in the commission of a crime of violence gen motivated by gender, has a cause of action against such party in any court of competent jurisdiction. Lane explains that when she was 17 years old back in 1998, McKinney won MTV's first model mission competition. She was given a modeling contract and her career started to take off with her appearing in all sorts of major magazines. And then in 2003, when she was 22 years old, McKinney says she was invited to attend a men's fashion week event being held in New York. Now, the person who invited McKinney is only referred to in the filing as the designer. But according to McKinney, quote, the designer told plaintiff that he would be introducing her to Combs, which could advance her modeling career. The designer began to direct plaintiff's appearance as he sought to ensure Combs found her attractive. The designer then handpicked a black leather coat with a fur hood, a translucent chiffon, beige V-cut shirt, fur-lined handbag and jewel-encrusted jeans for plaintiff to wear to the event. Due to the traumatic events to occur later, plaintiff saved the unwashed clothing from that night in her closet where they remain in a plastic wrap. Wow. Then he said he had the power to help her career, continued to be very flirtatious. He also allegedly kept plying her with alcohol. And at the end of the night or the end of the dinner, he allegedly told her he wants to get to know her better. McKinney says she accepted her first hit of marijuana, but now believes it was laced with some other narcotic. McKinney claims that Combs then led her to a bathroom where he allegedly forced her to perform oral sex on him, despite her saying no. Quote, upon standing and walking, plaintiff felt more and more woozy and then lost consciousness. Plaintiff awakened in shock to find herself in a taxi cab heading back to the designer's apartment. The lawsuit says that after the alleged assault, McKinney didn't get as much work in modeling or acting. Eventually, she couldn't get any work at all. Upon information and belief, Combs had plaintiff blackballed in the industry and utilized his significant influence to impede plaintiff's career growth. Plaintiff became severely depressed as she began to blame herself for the assault and for sabotaging her own career. The assault led plaintiff into a tailspin of anxiety and depression. In or about 2004, plaintiff attempted suicide and was hospitalized. McKinney also states that she was married from 2006 to 2010, but according to her, her relationship fell apart because she had a mental breakdown connected to this traumatic experience. And this all goes, by the way, to the harm element of a lawsuit. What did you suffer? What are you seeking? McKinney's lawyers state in the complaint, quote, as a direct and proximate result of the aforementioned crime of violence and gender motivated violence, plaintiff has sustained and will continue to sustain monetary damages, physical injury, pain and suffering, and serious psychological and emotional distress, entitling her to an award of compensatory and punitive damages, injunctive and declaratory relief, attorney's fees and costs, and other remedies as this court may deem appropriate. When she met Mr. Combs, Miss Lampro shared with him her dreams of working in the fashion industry. And Mr. Combs promised to mentor her and help her by introducing her to music and fashion industry executives, as well as assisting her with finding work. Mr. Combs love bombed her. He showered her with gifts and flowers as evidenced by one of the cards that accompanied the flowers that Mr. Combs sent Miss Lampros for Valentine's Day in 1994. A photo of the card from the New York florist, The Daily Blossom, says, Happy Valentine's Day, love Puffy. Mr. Combs went so far as to invite Miss Lampros to his first Father's Day celebration, and a picture of that invitation was included in this complaint as well. Now, from there, the complaint says that what started out as a love-bombing, flirty relationship quickly went south. This is according to Lampros. Quote, Upon information and belief, what Mr. Combs displayed as kind gestures quickly manifested into an aggressive, coercive, and abusive relationship based on sex. These acts were not isolated to the state of New York as Mr. Combs would fly Miss Lampros to Atlanta to see him, where they would spend time together. Miss Lampros would also fly to Miami to see Mr. Combs at his home. The filing includes two photos of Lampros purportedly at Combs' home in Florida, According to Ms. Lampros, Mr. Combs had a terrible temper and often threatened to harm her if she failed to do what he said, if he witnessed her talking to other men, or if she failed to take his phone calls. 
According to Ms. Lampro, she was also not allowed to talk about her relationship with Mr. Combs to anyone because he didn't want anyone to know he was seeing her because she is a white woman. Drop your thoughts below on these shocking allegations. And until next time, stay tuned.